The dynamics of how we theorize about the FNAF law has drastically changed over time, and for some people, that's a lot easier to accept than others. There's currently quite a large dissonance within the theorist community that I feel I could help clear up. To put it simply, the way that the story is told to us in the present is through world building. Hearing about real events from the books and looking at the environment around us to infer things about the games. But this never really used to be the case when the games were independently created by Scott Cawthon himself. And as a result, theorists need to evolve their thought process along with the game releases. But of course, a lot of people are still stuck in past habits. I'm never usually too blunt in my videos. I try to be respectful as possible, keep open-minded, and I try to present both sides of an argument so that you, as the viewer, can come to your own conclusions. I have a lot of respect for my fellow theorists here on YouTube, whether I agree with their opinions or not. But this time, this one instance, I feel the need to be more stern and to stand my ground. Dear FNAF theorists, green does not mean Charlie. Yeah, that's the topic of today's video. This implication has so many flaws despite how simple it is. But let's take this from the very beginning. This is Charlotte Emily, Henry's daughter, William's first murder, the girl who possesses the marionette. In Pizzeria Simulator's security puppet minigame, all of the children wear a different coloured wristband. The child outside, confirmed to be Charlie from Henry's ending speech, wears a green wristband. The security puppet has glowing green eyes to show that they are connected. The puppet was programmed specifically to protect the girl with the green bracelet. In fact, we see it all in Lefty's blueprint. And for some reason, many people are saying that green suddenly represents Charlie. Yes, in this minigame she was assigned that colour, but we should know by now that colours aren't usually consistent. Design choices aren't consistent. Consistency is thrown out the window when it comes to the FNAF series, and yet people actually come to this conclusion. So what exactly is wrong with it? I'm going to throw some spaghetti at the wall and see if it sticks. Charlie is in the security puppet minigame. Fantastic, she wears a green wristband. The security puppet in the security puppet minigame. Cool, it's got green eyes. The security puppet outside the security puppet minigame. Um, nope. How about the regular puppet? Well, that's got no green. The phantom puppet does, but Nightmarion doesn't. That's all already a huge flaw. And sure, Charlie in the novels wears green, but she also wears purple, and nobody calls her William Afton. Here's the second flaw, Elizabeth Afton. Because let's face it, if we're assigning colors to characters, then that would also mean Elizabeth is represented by green. To revise your knowledge, Circus Baby's eyes only ever become green due to Elizabeth's possession over her. In the minigame, they start out as blue and then any time after the scoop incident, she has green eyes. That's a very clear indication that the animatronic is possessed and that has been core knowledge since Sister Location first released. Problem is, now we're going back on ourselves, and considering that Charlie might be involved. So, if Elizabeth represents green, and Charlie represents green, then how do we distinguish one green from another? You can't, and therefore, this whole colour assignment is flawed. But it was flawed in the first step anyway. Purple guy becomes orange guy in Midnight Motorist. Uncoloured guy becomes purple guy, but not THE purple guy. Literally nothing matches, and colour connection theories just aren't good as they used to be. If you fancy another good watch, then I'd suggest checking out Cosmic Star's video on this, which I also reacted to in a FNAF theory review. And while I was watching it, it gave me some interesting thoughts. There is a resolution to this. If you want to connect a character to something, it should be a lot more specific than just an entire group of colours on the colour wheel and I think I have that resolution. But before we get into that, here's one of the biggest problems I see with this whole thought process. The claim that green equals Charlie can be extrapolated so far. Here, watch. This child has a green wristband, therefore it's Charlie. Seems simple enough. The Eye of the Tiger is a great Survivor song, but in the context of FNAF, is green. So that means there's a Charlie virus taking over. Cool. When Glitchtrap materializes in his digital beauty, 
he actually starts out green, therefore the Charlie virus is attached to the entity. Okay. In Roxanne's last moments, we see her AR head in green netting, therefore symbolizing Charlie's protection over her. Can you kind of see how this is getting out of control? Like, like this is the color green for goodness sake. It's just a color. There's nothing more to it. Anyway, Happy Frog is a green animatronic, which means the quiet whisper behind her in Ultimate Custom Night has to be Charlie. Speaking of frogs, Freddy gets a green frog in Bear of Vengeance. It's pretty abnormal to be seeing a green frog. It just has to be lore relevant. This chip in sister location has a green light. If you look closely in FNAF 1, our camera monitor has a green light. Our battery is given to us by Charlie. There's a green present in the prize counter. Phantom Puppet is green, but so are all of the other phantoms. Even Springtrap is green. Scraptrap and this thing from FNAF World 2. Hey, green guy is green. The grass is green. This grave on top of the green hill below the green leaf tree also has to be Charlie's grave, as well as the one in the green bush and the others atop the green grass. Radioactive Foxy? More like Radioactive Charlie. Okay. I draw the line at FNAF AR. You can see how Scott doesn't keep the colour green in his pocket until Charlie's around. There are things that are green just to be green, and that's the extent of it. The main ones I've heard recently are the Glitchtrap one, the Roxy one, and the green light on the chip. Two of these can be explained by the common trope of computer code just being green in general, and the green lit chip, as we touched on before, could just represent Elizabeth's possession of baby. Colour can be used so beautifully to craft lore, but it's also something that's extremely difficult to do, and I think Scott learned his lesson, especially after FNAF 4. But either way, Orange Guy's existence threw everything out the window. So what's the solution to this? How else would we know something is possessed by Charlie, and how does it differ from Elizabeth's themes? Let's start with Elizabeth. I actually already told you about her. It's all in the eyes. If you recall, Sister Location, the game that is and was always about us locating our sister, has a lot of implications built off of eyes. From Ballora's shut eyes to Ennard's many eyes and Michael's purple eyes. But the one huge thing that we need to remember about Baby is that she is possessed by this child who had green eyes. This was where the changeover happened, and it was at this pivotal moment we knew that green eyes on a circus baby animatronic implies Elizabeth's possession. And the key here is to be specific, because we know that circus baby with green eyes, or with no eyes at all, means Elizabeth isn't present. And on the flip side, we also know that green eyes on Toy Bonnie or on Tiger Rock doesn't automatically make her present. So now let's talk about Charlie again. Just like Elizabeth, we need to see what the animatronic they possessed looked like beforehand. And luckily, we do have one example of this. The Security Puppet minigame. This is what the Security Puppet looks like before Charlie possessed it, and this is what it looks like after. And now let's add all the other puppet forms. All of them have tear streaks. Something the puppet only ever gets until Charlie possesses it. And there's not much more to it than that. The puppet mask on the tangle doesn't have these streams because Charlie isn't present anymore. And that's it. She probably possesses all those Nightmare on bots under the pizza plex. There's nothing to do with green here, and therefore nothing to do with Charlie. I have respect for other theorists, and I think it's great that other people are trying to insert Charlie and Elizabeth into the modern games. But it doesn't seem natural to just force these sorts of theories into the wild. And I know there's other things that I can talk about, but I just want you to take away that this sort of evidence is pretty weak nowadays, and that's just the way that the series has evolved. Unfortunately, that's the truth, and I really hope that this misconception will be cleared going forward. With that being said, if you have any thoughts or questions of your own, then let me know in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want more content like this, then make sure to subscribe. Big thank you to all of you for the crazy support recently, plus the 50,000 subscriber milestone. I cannot thank you enough. I'll see you all in the next video.